Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming, and in this video, we're doing a video that has nothing to do with Pokemon. So if you're here for Pokemon, and that's all you want to hear about, I do apologize. It's not going to happen during this video. In fact, we're going to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! And they just recently reprinted the some of the original sets, including Legend of Blue-Eyes White Dragon. And I decided to open this box up because the case that came in was pretty wrecked. You can kind of see that there. Um, but I want to take any opportunity I can just to give you guys a little bit of insight in what I collect. So the original Legend of Blue-Eyes White Dragon actually looks like this right here. And you can see it's really similar. I mean, it's not too far off. Um, and that's the reason I really like these hobby boxes. I don't like the fact that, man, the wrapping on the outside, it just has a super cheap feel. It is nice that they actually say Konami on it because these first edition boxes are very well known for being faked and uh, a lot of times it's actually this edition here you can kind of see where the konami touches the outer ring a lot of times you can poke in and see if the top pack is upside down um, and then a lot of times the uh, the print the actual box itself will be very low quality i've done the normal checks that you can do on this one so i believe that this one is legitimate but there is another version that is for some reason less faked it's got this bigger first edition uh, symbol on it one of these i believe this is this has glossy, this has wavy. Those are just two different types of uh, original foiling for the, uh, for LOB. Uh, and then you also have the Unlimited, which you can see actually looks like this style here. I'm not really too sure if like this is glossy and that is wavy. I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not an expert on the stuff, but I do know that the fakes are, are out there. And you can, tell, you can see it's kind of like modern Japanese Pokemon boxes. They, there's just no no identifiers on the actual wrap itself now they did reprint more than just blue eyes white dragon they printed uh metal raiders spell ruler invasion of chaos and uh pharaoh servant in which i really wish instead of invasion of chaos they had did labyrinth of nightmare this is probably my favorite set i really like a lot of the cards in here the, the play with the monsters, traps, the, the magics. United We Stand was always one of the, my, the coolest cards, in my opinion. Uh, I believe Torrential Tributes in there. You've got uh, Mage Power. A lot of really powerful cards that um, you that come out in this set that worked really well with the GOAT format. I, don't, I doubt they do now. But um, this right here, the, I, I showed this box specifically because this is actually a 36 count box. There are very few boxes that Yu Gi Oh! ever printed 36 count. They actually printed these in. 24 count as well uh, i believe one is a hobby box one is i'm not sure which one is which but i think the 24 count is a hobby box again i could have that backwards but one of them was meant for like retail one of them wasn't I, i'm not too sure on that um but let's get into opening this up because i'm actually pretty excited to open this box up i busted a case to open this one the reason i busted it is because the corner was just wrecked and i i knew that it it was, it's going to affect the value anyway, so let's have a little bit of fun with it. Maybe I'll take some of the other damaged boxes and have fun with it in the future. Man, this box feels so cheap. Is this, is this how Yu-Gi-Oh cards are printed now? But the reason I, I'm investing in some of these LOB boxes because even though this is you know probably like the fifth time that LOB has been reprinted, what, 2003, 2010, 17? I mean, at least... Um, look at the boxes, man. Like they, they look so similar. Can you imagine if Pokemon reprinted a set and just called it base set 20, 30th anniversary or something? Like that'd be pretty epic. And if it looked almost exactly like it, like it was an, a, an accurate reflection of what the original base set was, I could see it being really, really popular. Think about CP6. That was an accurate representation of the original Japanese base set. That was released but celebrations didn't look anything like the english side base set all right so let's see what we have here now i'm not sure how these packs do now i'm not sure if it's uh gonna get a hollow in there or what you can see these do have the en on it so the cards are the original cards don't have en on them you can see they're dated 2020 okay all right so pack number one got a giant soldier stone oh and a red eyes black dragon. Wow. Way to start off on. I, I wonder if you're going to get a hollow in every pack. That or we just hit one of two ultra rares that's going to be in the entire box. It used to be, 
he had a one in four chance of pulling a hollow because it was one in six to pull a super rare. Well, slightly better better than that. One in twelve chance to pull an ultra rare, and then it was usually like one in twenty four to pull a secret rare. So in one box, you get one secret rare, which is kind of like this, but it's like sideways cross hatch silver print. Then you'd have an ultra rare, which is gold lettering, which that's what this is. Other than you know, they didn't. This wasn't this wasn't hollow on the original cards. In fact, so like this is an ultra rare. You can see how it's just it's got gold letters and it's hollow in there. And what I was talking about earlier about the glossy versus wavy. If you look at the foil, this is like super smooth, super super glossy. But then if you look at this foil here, it's almost like it's got a wave to it. But this is a super rare, it's just hollow in the middle. Those you'd get one, or you get four per booster box, so one in every six booster packs. But let's keep going. If I, if I keep going this slow, we're, we're never going to make it through everything. So this is the pack we just looked in, right? Yeah, we've got Giant Soldier of Storm. It used to be you'd, you wouldn't get a rare and a hollow in there. That was something that was started later on. Flame Ghost. <laughs> okay, so maybe we are going to get a hollow in every pack. Man, that is... That's kind of sick. That's that makes these. I bet these are gonna be super fun to open up. Like if you wanted to do like draft or something, and, and you just play with the cards that you open up. I had no idea they were like this. Arm Ninja. Oh no, not in that one. So now I'm confused. I don't know. So we hit two ultra rares, which with old odds that would have been. That would have been it. Your box is dead, you know. So well, let's just see. There's a super rare right there. You got the dark hole. So we'll just keep going straight down. Hopefully they're not like mappable because those are the top two packs, I believe. The first two, like one on each side. Grave Digger Ghoul. So let's see. Would this one have a super rare then? If it was like the same on the left or right, I don't know why I'm trying to figure all this stuff. We just need to have some fun with it. I'm already happy that we've uh, hit two decent ultra rares. So that's a Cherubin. The Fire Knight. I recently started, started selling some of my non-ultra rare, secret rare, that kind of stuff. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I've kept the really high-end stuff for myself. There's polymerization. That's how you used to be able to fuse. I never ran too many fusion monsters. Always wanted to have a cyber stain. Pull out the ultimate blue eyes white dragon. Or blue eyes ultimate white dragon. I'd rather trade a mirror force for one of them. Some of you have heard my story on that one before. Alright, what's next? Alright, so nothing in that one either. There are a few cards that were changed in the original first edition. You had the Trial of Hell, which was changed to Trial of Nightmare. Hain Hain. We started out strong. Hit, hit a little dry spell here. Some of my most memorable cards that weren't actually from LOB. It was Metal Raiders, Labyrinth of Nightmare, and... There's two cards that actually take me back to childhood that were never good, but they were in some of the first packs I ever opened up, and they were the strongest ones in those packs. The nice Swords of Revealing Light. So we haven't passed the initial odds just yet. If this was a regular box, from back then we'd have one Secret Rare and one Super Rare left. Two pronged attack. Felt a little thicker. But. Those two cards were Crab Turtle, which was it's a ritual monster. And you had to have a, a magic card, I believe it was Turtle Oath. And then that Turtle Oath. Ooh, Guy of the Dragon Champion. Got a secret rare. Centering isn't great on it, but man, look at that. What a pull. And then you'd have to sacrifice stars equal to his stars, which I think Crab Turtle might have been a seven star monster, if I'm thinking right. And you you could send them from your hand, which is kind of cool. 
There's another gravedigger ghoul. But I remember playing with a kid that I met when I went to see my grandparents before the, they passed. And he was the neighbor, and we played Yu-Gi-Oh all day. I don't, I, we were just trying to learn makeup rules off of how if, uh, off of the show. And if you ever watched the show, you know that uh, you can't really go off of how they play, especially the original Yu-Gi-Oh. But um, that was one card that I remember playing that day, and it just sticks out in my head. The other card is Wing Weaver. It was from Pharaoh's Servant. He had 2,750 attack points, which... I mean, that was, that was pretty stout for a monster. I mean, Blue Eyes White Dragon had 3,000. But uh, the only reason that one sticks out, it was in the first pack I had, and I thought it was pretty strong, and it was. It wasn't like a hollow or anything like that. But I remember being at school, and somebody asked me what my strongest Yu-Gi-Oh! monster was. And I said, well, my strongest is Wing Weaver. And he looked at me, and I just remember what he said. He was like, man, my deck would kick your deck's butt. <laughs> it's like... Like, well, you asked if it was what was the strongest monster card, not like what's the best card. I mean, and a deck isn't really based off of your strongest monster or any of your best cards, it's really about how you put them together and how consistent you play them. So, I just kind of roll with it, but it, it, it always makes me chuckle thinking back to it. There's the fissure, man. You know, we may have hit the two ultra rares in the very first two packs. When I hit those two, I would have I would have thought it would have been more likely that we would have hit. Um, there's the fourth super rare that we would be hitting ultra rares in every pack because they changed up the odds over it actually being the same odds at that point. Like I would have thought it'd be more likely to go that way, but we got three packs left. This deck or this this box may be dead. There's the pot of greed. Because these are the exact odds that it used to be. One secret rare, two ultra rares, and four super rares. Every now and then, <clears throat> you might get an extra super rare. But I don't know if I've ever seen three ultra rares. I, I haven't opened up enough. My father, he bought me a Metal Raiders first edition box. It was a 36, maybe it was unlimited. It was a 36 count box, if I'm remembering right. Yeah, there it is, Metal Dragon. All right, so we got... The secret rare, there's two secret rares, Trihorn Dragon and Guy the Dragon Champion. The way the secret rares work on Yu-Gi-Oh! is usually the first, the very last. So 125 is the very last card in the set. If it was triple zero, that would be the Trihorn Dragon. And then you have all the original sets had ten ultra rares. So this is one-fifth of the set. One-half of the secret rares, one-fifth of the ultra rares. And there's also ten super rares. So this is 40% of the super rares you can get. Didn't get the Regeki. That's the one that I would have really liked to have gotten. Um... Curse of Dragons, okay. Swords is pretty good. Dark Hole is pretty good. Regeki's the one I wanted there. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's been a long time since I've opened up any Blue Eyes White Dragon. Booster Packs probably last time was when Ruxin was here. He actually opened up. He pulled the Exodia. But it's kind of cool to see the same odds, similar pack. But as always, hope you enjoyed the video, and we should have some Pokemon stuff coming out very soon. Thanks.